What's up everybody, today we are continuing the series of small condenser type microphones, also known as pencil type microphones, with the newer NW410 set. It is a pair that comes in this little box right here and we're gonna talk about it. A quick disclaimer before we jump into this video. None of the companies mentioned in this video or in the videos regarding this series are sponsoring any of this. All of these tests are done because I'm looking for the perfect microphone to put overhead into my YouTube studio and also use in other kind of environments. For the most part, however, I'm looking for something that does reject the echo and room reverberance very well, does not have a strong noise floor, and of course, I also am looking to upgrade my sound. I'm not going to cover any instrument recording with these microphones since that is not what I'm doing. I usually only record pretty much always my voice as well as sometimes other people's voices. Now I also want you to know the environment that I'm doing all of these tests in and that basically is my YouTube studio. As you can see on the screen it's a fairly large room which has a lot of reverberance and echo. I've tried treating this room with the rugs on the floor as well as this kind of like sound blanket curtain that is almost separate the room into two halves. This is what you get and this is the environment that I am filming with. I do think that this is kind of perfect because it is an imperfect environment and to make those tests in exactly this environment I think makes a lot of sense because not everybody can fully treat their room and have the perfect environment. Additionally, I also think that it's important to mention that all of the recordings are done with the Zoom F6, the 32-bit float wave file recording in 48 kilohertz. And last but not least, the normalization of this video as well as the audio tests is done to minus 16 LKFS, which is basically the same as LUFS. This is done with loudness control in Isotopes RX8 and you can see the settings that I used on the screen. Now that we have all that covered, let's jump into the video. Now you might have seen the video that I published yesterday about the Behringer C2. If you haven't, there's a link in the description down below to a playlist of multiple reviews of these types of microphones that you are hearing here. The purpose of the series is comparing different microphones of different price points to each other and also whether the lower price tier ones also can compete with one mid-tier microphone, which is the Octava MK012. Today we have the newer NW410 here, which comes in a wonderful little box here. It really feels high quality. And opening this package up, we can see there's a little bit of the paperwork with the frequency response chart and stuff like that. Then you can see that there are two microphones. One is obviously in use right now. This is overhead here and you're also listening to it. This is with the hypercardioid capsule. And then you have multiple capsules for each microphone. There is a omnidirectional capsule for each microphone. There is a cardioid capsule for each microphone. And then there is also a hypercardioid capsule. Both of the microphones also have a little bit of a cover so that you have like a wind muff or wind shield and you have the holders for the microphones. Now specifically with the microphone holder, it's interesting to know that those don't come with any type of adapters. They only have this really big one and none of the smaller types. So not even for the normal microphone stand or something or at least not the ones that are commonly used in Europe. These microphones are a full metal build and that goes all around. Unscrewing the capsule, we can see that there is a connection there for the different capsules. As mentioned before, there is a hypercardioid cardioid as well as omnidirectional capsule. Something to note about this connection up here is that with wear and tear and screwing this capsule on and off multiple times, it seems to be a relatively soft metal and you might damage that threading right there. So you have to be really, really careful with that. Other than that, and as mentioned before, it's a full metal build. It feels really nice in terms of its production quality. Overall, it has a little bit of a weight to it, around 132 grams per microphone with its capsule. And there is a small screw right here, which is probably to take apart the microphone. Something to note around the capsule is that these are actually relatively sharp and that makes it really difficult to put on the foam for the windscreen. So you really have to work there to not damage the windscreen and rip that apart. That is something that I have differently experienced with other microphones. 
As you can also see, there is nothing built into the microphone. It is basically just a connection right there. There is no low cut or 10 dB pad or anything like that with this microphone. There's also nothing you can screw on top of here as it is with, for example, the Octava MK012 where you can add a 10 dB pad up here. I also have not found any other add-ons to this set. So these capsules and these microphones are pretty much all that Newer does in this specific bracket or in this specific type. That might change in the future, but for now, this is everything there is. The set comes with a hypercardioid, a cardioid, and a omnidirectional capsule. This is really useful for different types of rooms as well as environments. For example, in my room, the hypercardioid works better if I have the dividing curtain up in this room. However, if I don't use that, the cardioid sounds a little better. And also the omnidirectional is a completely different use case, for example, to record a room tone or the room noise of a set or something like that. And having two of these, obviously you could also use one of them active for a boom pole or something like that. And then also have a second microphone running as a room tone microphone. This microphone has a frequency response from 30 all the way to 18 kilohertz. Also, the sensitivity is up to minus 38 decibels. The self noise is specified with 24 decibels, the max sound pressure with 135 decibels, and the output impedance is 100 ohms. Then of course this microphone also is in need of phantom power and based on the manufacturer it can work with anywhere between 9 to 52 volts. The measurements are 19 millimeters in width, 130 millimeters in length with a capsule and 132 grams also with a capsule in weight. Then we also have everything that comes in the box, which are two microphone bodies, three microphone capsules per body. So that's a total of six microphone capsules. Then we have two microphone holders, two microphone windscreens, and of course the box itself. Then in terms of pricing, the whole kit comes in at around 66 euros or 125 US dollars. At least that's the price that I was able to find it at as of recording this video. Also, there's no option to get just one of those microphones with those capsules. You either get two of them or none. Now this is going to be really interesting comparing this set to the Octava MK012 because there you can also get a set like this with two microphones and three capsules each, but that costs you around 525 euros. Now considering that with the European price, that's almost 10 times as much and with the US price still five times as much money as you would have to spend on this microphone right here. And we are going to listen in how that compares in terms of sound, self noise and all of that. But in this review, we are focusing on this microphone standalone as it is. Now with what comes in the box and the technical details out of the way, I think it's time to jump into some sound samples. As usual, I will conclude with more sound samples at the end of the video. And there are also chapter markers in the description below so that you can jump around at your own leisure and listen to different distances as well as side, rear and stuff like that. All of that is done with all of the different capsules, also with overhead mounting and just different distances in speaking into this microphone. So let's listen in. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. 
Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Now I would say this microphone sounds pretty dang impressive considering its price point. Overall, the difference between the capsules is something I'm going to talk about in an upcoming video specifically, because obviously different capsules are useful for different environments, and it is also obvious that they sound differently in my environment. For example, the omnidirectional capsule, for obvious reasons, picks up more of the room reverberance, but that's the whole point of an omnidirectional microphone, picking up everything from everywhere. Between the other two capsules, the cardioid and the hypercardioid capsule, I noticed that the hypercardioid sounds way more deep and almost muddy to a certain degree, at least on my voice in this environment and for these tests. But this test also showed me that there's a strong difference between the cardioid and the hypercardioid, even with just the test of going further away and speaking into the front of the microphone. Now, what I found interesting is that the volume loss as you move away from the capsule is not as pronounced on the cardioid versus the hypercardioid capsule. Now, this is specifically interesting looking at the Behringer C2 that I talked about yesterday, where I was really surprised as to how much the volume is lost as you just move away from the front of the capsule, not talking to the sides or anything like that. And there I noticed that this volume drops off very fast, even with just 30 centimeters of distance. Now with this, I now understand, or at least it seems like, that hypercardioid capsules have this volume drop off in the front of the microphone very pronounced, as to cardioid capsules, those don't have that as much. So the cardioid capsule picks up more even from the front of the microphone. Similarly, the omnidirectional capsule kind of works like the cardioid capsule in terms of volume loss as the distance increases. So that was also very interesting. Interestingly, the plosives were handled better in this microphone, specifically on the proximity test, even without the windscreen. So that was definitely a plus for this microphone. And using it overhead, obviously you've heard it the whole time, this is how it sounds with the hypercardioid capsule, and that's also the capsule that I would prefer to use in my environment. However, I have to note here, and this is also going to be covered in an upcoming video, the hypercardioid capsule only sounds good since I have added the curtain, because before that the cardioid capsule actually sounded better because there wasn't as much of a halo room behind the microphone. So since adding this curtain wall, this is much better. Now in terms of noise floor I have a sample where I used all four microphones at the same time and here is the sample of the newer NW410 specifically at 0 dB after normalization of that track to minus 16 LKFS and also showing you the same track with plus 15 decibels. Now I would say the noise floor sounds like the price point. It pretty much reflects the cheapness of this microphone pretty well, because as you move up the ladder in terms of microphone price, most often the noise floor is the one thing that gets lower and lower and lower. And depending on how you want to use this microphone, that really greatly defines whether or not you can actually keep using or use this microphone for your own use case. I personally am really sensitive to a high noise floor and I cannot stand it and I love to use denoising tools. However, those usually make the sound all sound a little electronic and muddy. So I don't prefer using that. And that's of course one of the main reasons why I'm looking for a good microphone for this environment so that I don't have to do as much post-processing. Now this may not be a problem for you if you get your microphone close to your source and also use an audio interface or a good audio recorder like the Zoom F6 to not introduce more noise into your mix. This may also not be a problem for you if you always have background music playing that kind of covers up any pauses where there might be the noise really audible because it usually becomes really audible when you're not really talking or you don't really have anything that is being said. Now be mindful of that but now at least you know how it sounds. Now what are my thoughts on this microphone and will I keep it for my own use in the studio? Well, for obvious reasons, I'm going to give you my thoughts on that specifically once the whole review series is over and I will publish that microphone review where I will talk about all four microphones that I'm reviewing here. Now for now, I would say the price is really impressive for what you get. The case, the metal build, the three capsules for each microphone body, it's just mind blowing. And if you can handle the noise and also work with that, then this might be a really good choice for you.
But before you buy this microphone, I would also recommend to listen to the Behringer C2 review and also to the two upcoming reviews about the T-Bone as well as the Octava MK012. Those are all in this series and linked in the description down below so that you can check it out there. But of course there will also be the final review where I'm going to compare all of these microphones against each other and give you my thoughts about which microphone I would keep depending on what my needs are. After the outro, I will include all the other samples that I recorded with those microphones and the different capsules in my studio here. So be sure to check those out and also use those chapter markers to jump around between them. For now, this is all the information I have for you today and I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up so that other people may find this information as well. That helps out a lot for the YouTube algorithm. You can leave any comments and questions in the comment section down below so that I can answer them there or make a video specifically about that. You can also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos and also, of course, activate that notification bell. Now, I hope you have an amazing day. Choose your microphones wisely and I will see you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. 
Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59 Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow if you will keep digging. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations 7.59